The Mercedes A-Class in its facelift with the AMG version, Mercedes AMG A45 and also later on the normal A-Class version. All today on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. With me, with Thomas, and we'll take a focus on the AMG version, especially this one here today. Very beautiful color here with this Magno Mountain Grey and this matte styling but also some other versions later on. So if you're more interested in the normal A-Class and we'll also have a racetrack part here, obviously today. So this will be very interesting as for the exterior, interior, the experience from driving, the racing performance and the normal everyday driving. All in here in this review, everything you need to know about the A-Class facelift. As I said, we'll start with the AMG version. You know, there has been a renaming process, so all real AMG models are now named Mercedes AMG and then A45 or, you know, C63, whatever. So that's the new naming process. The AMG is in front of the name. Then. So, and well, we have the special bumper here, sporty bumper. Everything is bigger as for the air intakes and so on. By the way, for the AMG version, there's at the right side, there's another cooler place behind the right part. So we have second uh, water cooler there. And that is because, you know, we have two liters of displacement here below the hood in the engine, but now 318 horsepower. We'll soon also take a look beneath the hood there. In other words, for all A-Class facelift versions, we got slightly changed headlights. So there hasn't been too much changes here in the front, actually. Quick look beneath the hood. The famous AMG one man, one engine concept. So it says Philip Zoltau here. This is the guy who built this engine because he was responsible for all the parts there. 381 horsepower. So they even increased the horsepower figure, but even more important, they also changed the transmission. So they are shorter shifting ways and that almost makes this facelift AMG a half second faster from 0 to 100 kilometers than the previous version then. 4.2 seconds is the acceleration figure, so very impressive for this compact car. But there are also other engines available, we'll show you later on. It starts really with 102 horsepower, so you get 1.6 liter petrol engines, and this one is a 2 liter displacement, and you get 1.5 liter diesels and 2.2 liter diesels, so a wide variety of engines. This is here the top AMG engine and we'll have a lot of fun with it. And of course, it has a really great sound. Just check this one out. The current generation of the Mercedes A-Class has been running since 2012 and it was a really complete change. The previous generation was rather this compact van, 
Now this one has more this sporty style between 2012 and then the average age of the customer of an A-Class decreased by 13 years. So definitely younger customers now. Well, they lost some customers definitely. Maybe they're buying a B-Class now or maybe some other brand, but they also gained new customers then with this new sporty setup. And you see it in the side profile here, especially with the AMG version. 18-inch alloys are from the standard version. Here, these ones are the 19-inch alloys optional. You see, with, I really prefer those new tires that overlap a little bit and they protect even if you pick 19-inch alloys that you don't scratch them so easily. So that is really well done. And then you also can see this detail of this matte surfacing here. And um, the, the final paint that is applied also changes the whole structure when you feel it. It really, um, and you know, it's not that really that, that, that clean when you feel it. It's very interesting also from, from the surface, just from the, from the haptical point of view. Yeah, and you see the classic side profile here in the A-Class. It's really sitting very flat with a very round ending. That is, by the way, not that good for the overview from the inside. So if you're looking straight in the back here when you're sitting in the seat, that is not that good. But it, of course, serves a design line from the outside. Special for the A-Class AMG facelift is this new wing here because they have really worked on the aerodynamics of the car. So this is actually one part of it. And the next part is very below because there's a completely new diffuser as well that also has changed the aerodynamics and um, it pr presses the car actually to the ground. It really looks massive and kind of strange, but obviously they tested it a lot in the, in the wind ch uh, channel. So, um, this really helps the car to get the aerodynamic balance. And I can tell you already so far, the aerodynamic balance is really good. And of course, the bigger exhaust here in the AMG version for this really great sound then. So I also want to know your opinion, what you think about the styling of the AMG version here. I think they have found actually a good balance because we got some aggressive elements, but it's, you know, it's not too much for me, you know? It, um, doesn't look that you may be like a, driving like a villain or so. You can still use this car in everyday driving without everyone like staring. So I think they found a good mix here. Oh, what do you think? By the way, one final detail here. Carbon fiber mirror caps, very nice. interior overview the door handle I just the, the paint just feels great after have to thrift it very solid door handle and let's take a look inside the special AMG sporty interior with red contour stitches everywhere for example the inside of the steering wheel also we got this racing 12 o'clock position sign here with the steering wheel and special red vents very nice emotional details at the same time, everything is again very clean and the build quality is really high class. The seats are the special performance seats. I will soon talk more about them, especially about the seats when we sit down, but just the first overview. There are normal seat belts at the side. I can show you that as well. So that is just fake, the gaps in there, but they are also red at another contrast then. And now the seat special. Which one should you actually go for and which ones are available? Starting with the normal AMG version, you usually get from Serial Production microfiber on the inside from Dynamica and then this full leather on the outside, not like, like here. So usually microfiber on the inside, full leather on the outside called Artico at Mercedes. These ones are in a serial. Then the next upgrade are sports seats with full leather like here. So full real animal skin. And then this is here, this right here, the third option the performance seat. They have even stronger lips here on the side, lower and on the higher part. And you can also adjust them right here. So you can move them to the inside or to the outside of the seat. Then. And there's also lumbar support available. So this is the highest option here you can pick. So just go 
for the serial seats when you have the AMG version and you'll be just fine. This mix you can see also right here at the steering wheel by the way because the steering wheel has this mix here, microfiber here on the outside and that is just really great. It offers you a great grip and also feels soft at the same time. All other leather looking parts, for example here at the dashboard or also inside of the doors or at the armrest, they are all anyway this um, article leather. So this is not real leather and it is good that way. And there you can see, wait, well, why do they do it? It lasts longer. It looks also better in the long term. It doesn't get used so fast. And there's actually no need to use the animal skin, the real animal skin. So this is a good example for them that it looks really good. You can have a great visual, visual um, aspect here in, on the whole interior and not harm any animals. That's a really great aspect. Everything else about the interior, I'm really a fan of it because they really play with the contrast with the with the article leather and the vents with the contrast on the outside and then a lot of carbon fiber elements those used and also how the gaps are hidden. So really perfection in processing. Now the really interesting cockpit overview. Again, we have a lot of central features, how Mercedes calls them. That have, I, mean, I can really agree in this, this case. My favorite is really the steering wheel. It has the right size, flattened end, and again, the microfiber on the outside. Just the perfect steering wheel, at least for me. Classic instruments then, and what is new now in the facelift for all the A-Class models, the screen is bigger, and also the frame here on the outside is not that huge, so you got more screen, less frame. Um, the software basically remained the same. This is GPS, by the way. We are on the Lausitzring. That's a racetrack in the east of Germany. You can see it right here. And actually, well, everything is reachable quite intu intuitively. It's not a touchscreen, so you do everything. Um, so you obviously see that's not possible. You do everything with a central control unit in, in, the, in the lower part, as we are also used to from other Mercedes models. And then you can switch around from GPS here or to media when you want to use an iPhone or CD player. Because this is still a CD slot left here and with some buttons. Um, I'm not sure how many of you guys are using this because maybe in the face of I would have also thought about putting the climate unit here. Because here the air conditioning is placed very far below. So when you're driving, it's um, you really have to get used to it to look down that far. I can also turn on the ignition and you can see how it is actually illuminated then. Um, see it right here. And everything feels high class processed here of course as well. Also with the buttons that is really very nice. So here again in the detail, as I said, well processed. But for me a little bit too low in the cockpit overall. Then in front of that is a small storage with a 12 volt power supply. And then this special AMG shifting lever. I think it's very beautifully done. It sits a little bit low but very easy to control and for example when you go back and forth you can also very well do that so it takes no time to do that. Then we have the new drive selector included in all the bigger engine models of course now in the AMG, Comfort, Sport, Sport Plus, Race or Individual. These change the settings for throttle input and suspension. I will also tell you more about it when we drive later on. And you also can see the overview then in the screen. So this is comfort then, sport changes the throttle input to sport, the engine setting, then sport plus also changes the suspension and race. See the difference here. This change even even sport here characteristics. And you can also switch the ESP off when two different stuff. And then individual you can set everything. Just, uh, <laughs> it looks like a touchscreen middle, uh, meanwhile, but it is actually not. So you can do it right here and then change, for example, the setting to comfort or sport on your own. And everything infotainment wise is controlled right here. A very nice emotional feature, special for the AMG version is here. If you go to the menu to vehicle and put in the dynamic select and then engine data, you see this screen here and um, Maybe we'll also see it with the action camera when we're on the race track. But you can see the Newton meter and also the, um, the power and, and the temperatures here. And when I, for 
percent of push throttle. You see how it reacts. Quite funny feature. And the seat control is right here. Same for the co and the normal driver. It's always at the inside of the doors. You can't uh, change the headrest here because it's the integrated sports seats. And it's a good solution because you see then actually what you're doing. And the instruments, round, steep in there, silver background then on the outside, but rather classic. And then the infra screen in the middle is very good resolution. And for example, you can see 11.6 liters on 100 kilometers consumption. That is really a mixed consumption. You can drive this car with about nine liters if you're really calm, but then if we you know, did some acceleration tests and so on, it rises above that level, of course. What is interesting that you can also see, for example, GPS information, but there's also a special AMG info screen with temperatures of oil and coolant and so on. And there you can also pick lap times. There you can see that counts. We know that, for example, from, from Porsche, but there it is included in, a, in an extra stopwatch. You can press OK and you got the first lap. You know, well, nine seconds for the, and then it runs lap two, lap three, and so on. So if you really want to use this car for the racetrack, and it is actually possible, yes, a compact car for the racetrack, and we will also test that quite soon. So and how does the famous race start, the launch control work? Put it into D, then into S, S plus or race mode. Then pressing once is ESC sport, holding the button is ESC off. And then we're actually almost ready to go. Then we have to, that now it gets a little bit complicated because with Porsche you could just like hammer the brake with the left foot and then hammer the throttle with the right. So now we have to hold both shifting pedals at the same time. Then race start appears, then I have to press the pedal up. Now it's available holding my left foot on the brakes and then right foot on the throttle. And it goes until three and a half RPMs. And then I can release the brake and the car jumps to the front. Let's see how that goes. great racing feature. However, if you now think, oh, my A-Class AMG, it still doesn't work, that might have something to do with the temperature inside the different parts. The car itself has to be already warm and at an operating temperature. And it's not only the engine, also the transmission. So if it doesn't work right now, although you have paid attention to all the details, just go around a little bit and then try it again. Let's now talk about smartphone integration. At the beginning of 2016, Mercedes will introduce this integration with Apple CarPlay and also MirrorLink in the compact class models. Here, of course, then also in the A-Class. So how does it really work? For example, we see the Apple CarPlay connection in here in this test showcase car. This one is already equipped with it. After you have connected your phone to it, then it is also mirrored to the screen above. You have to plug in your phone though, not via Bluetooth. However, you can still use a standard Bluetooth function. What do you actually need for it? Either you pick the command and it's already included, or just if you don't have this one, then you have to pay like about 300 euros extra to use the smartphone integration if you have the multimedia system already. So that's the way and then for example you can access the phone or messages or the mails and it mainly works that you use the voice integration. That means that Siri is for example working with the with the iPhone together and you say something or you 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 say and then there's um, this speech to text mode where messages can be sent for example. So, and then afterwards, if you didn't want to use that or used it before, then you also access it as it would be on the smartphone. Okay, was möchtest du Markus Müller sagen? Hallo Markus, ich komme heute 15 Minuten später. Bitte äh, warte mit dem Essen. Deine Nachricht an Markus Müller lautet, Hallo Markus, ich komme heute 15 Minuten später. Bitte warte mit dem Essen. Soll ich sie senden? Ja. Okay, sie wurde gesendet. Ja. 
let's see how functional the car is, because you will not only use it on the racetrack, of course. See, they've shaped the race seats in the way that the knees have a, some space. And, um, well, they're actually quite slim, and that works then, really. So I got the driver's seat as I will be driving, 1 meters 86. That is still quite okay with the knees. Um, headspace, I would not go for any panoramic roof, because then you can't sit as an adult in the back very well. So this one here is still okay. Just my hairs are touching the seating, but very slightly. Just That's actually quite fine. And also the seating position here in the rear is quite upright. And I do prefer it when it's rather upright. So actually I've seen cars in the compact segment which have more space here inside, but I've also seen a lot of which have less space. So overall, I think from how spacious it is, actually quite average, I would say. But also the whole interior, you know, it's more about this sporty approach, not too much space. For example, in the Golf GTI, in the Golf R, you feel you have a lot more space, everything is more roomy. And here it's more like this little bit cage in, more sporty appeal, though that's where this car is rather aiming at. And also the loading area is not really class leading. We've put a lot of stuff in here that you can see how much you can put in there, but we've also seen in the compact class that there are actually larger trunks. But overall you get along quite well. And I mean, for a racing car, you can still say that you can use this car very well in everyday driving as also for the functionality. It's also that you don't sit that low in a real sports car, but I can tell you from driving, it is a real sports car. And we will start now with the normal driving and then move on to the racetrack. We'll start our test right now. So I think sound for a compact car. Already quite good. At least already from what we hear from the inside. And let's see. We'll start. So the good thing of a compact car, if you're in the parking lot, starting a ride. It's actually never a problem to find a parking spot. You know, this 4 meters 29 of a length, you can really use that in everyday driving. It's, um, it's a really good thing. So we got this new GPS here I've shown you. And um, so we have a, also a good overview of where we're actually going with a bigger screen here now. Not so much frame around the screen and that also helps us when driving, of course. Steering wheel here, it's a very good size, quite of compact, so with its flattened end. And always just a short way to the next traffic light, surrounding some emotions just from the sound you hear. And um, actually it's quite good to have powerful compact cars because it is, you know, it is not really that exaggerated. You can still use the car for your everyday driving stuff. As I said, first of all, it's practical when searching some spark hiking spot. And also just here in traffic, you don't feel, you know, you got a huge car, you can fit everywhere. And so you're also quite enough relaxed, although you've got a lot of power. Then. And we'll also take a look at the consumption because that might also be a factor, even if you buy a high performance model in everyday riding it should be better when the consumption is rather low i especially like with the steering wheel here also for the long-term comfort that you got this cloth on the outside and that's a very good grip but also when you you know not only need the grip it's also quite good because it's just comfortable you know because it's just very soft here especially at the sides comfort road right now but that means also when I push on the throttle the car goes forward quite fast however in the comfort mode the suspension is set on comfort they especially worked on the suspension setup and also the steering and everything but you know the car is not that kind of racy stiff that you would say it is directly uncomfortable so I think they found a quite good balance there however I can also switch the different driving modes then for example there's also sport plus available and you maybe already heard that so the throttle is kind of preloading 
the gears are turned out higher in the RPMs and I get a more direct throttle input. However, you may realize now I have to wait until the turbo sets in. So that's the case then here with the turbo car. And then there's here also a race mode available and um, this is even more throttle input and also the electronic stability control is drawn back a little bit. We'll test this one later when we go to the racetrack actually because now it's more about the everyday driving and later on we have the racetrack part here that will also be some kind of interesting piece then for this one. About the seating position when driving, yes, they are actually sports seats and that can also be quite good because now switch to combat mode again, you maybe heard that. Uh, it's a very interesting course and then the exhaust all changed. Yeah, to the seats, um, actually you also got quite of good shoulder support here in the upper area and um, that's not only something for sporty driving, that can also help you just in everyday driving because you're also kept tight in the seat. And for long-term comfort, it's also not always good when the seats are actually too soft. Um, however, I usually prefer the non that sporty seats for the everyday riding comfort um, because sometimes they are you know don't offer you too much too much space especially in the seating area but in general I think you can also get along as a tall person here very well also what we can see when while driving that the central screen here has changed a little bit so you got a very clear overview also while riding then for this one is quite good so that's a little bit yeah it's already fun just driving around a little bit here in the city um, so that's always something because you you know you also want to be kind of emotionally connected to a car and that's surely not a problem with this one here so let's switch from comfort to let's say sport plus wow did you hear that great so that is really what I find great with riding this car, you can really have both. It was now in the Sport Plus mode and in the screen I always see what is actually activated. For example, the suspension is on Sport and also the, the engine, the throttle input is on Sport, but still got the ESP on. And then if I, you know, difference between Sport, that's, that's Sport Plus, you hear it from the exhaust. Then Sport, that with Sport, the throttle input is higher, but the suspension is still in comfort. And then comfort, everything's kind of calm and comfortable. And that is really um, the thing. You, you know, you don't have to decide really. For example, with, um, let's say, the, the Ford Sport models. There, it's kind of always stiff, always sporty. Yeah, if you appreciate it, that's perfectly fine. But yeah, I think it's very good that you can control it electronically. That you, you know, maybe something in your the mood. Okay, I'm just commuting to work. I want to ride comfortable and calm. It's probably fine, but then maybe think, oh, there's like some great curves here. I know this kind of um, kind of track or whatever, and they want to really go sporty, and then you have the chance actually. So, so this new system here is actually, um, by the way, included starting with the two liter engines. You know, just to um, to remind you again, there was with the petrol engines was 1.6 liter and two liters, so. Starting with the two-liter engines, it's included in here, of course, here in the AMG version. And with the diesels, it's um, it's the same, and we got the 1.6 and 2.2 liter there, and there it's also with a above two liters displacement. There you have this drive selector here included, and um, yeah, I think it's good, especially here with the AMG version, because you then not only rely on that very sporty ride. So by the way, here, just testing some steering wheel, that is really great so direct input here that's exactly how we like it let's see again with the different driving modes if we go to sport plus again if that's a difference mm, that rather feels the same but i think that's perfectly fine with me um, because this steering wheel set up here with a very direct steering it's just just perfect to me so and um, especially in the amg version we also got this 12 o'clock marker inspired by racing and that also adds another very interesting small emotional feature. What else is there to say after riding now a little bit longer? Well, it is remarkable that every small detail is really tuned to perfection. For example, the Distronic Plus, of 
course you have to pick it optionally but this option is really worth it because this is the adaptive cruise control and along with the system Volvo is offering it's the best on the market it really works flawlessly here in combination with the dual clutch transmission it's really going from you know something standing in front of you or really goes down to zero kilometers so you don't have to watch out for that and of course also holds the distance to the car in front of you and just holds the speed when you're just riding with a, with a free road and that's a really comfortable system and it also adds of course to safety if you were maybe some kind of distracted checking out the GPS um, or maybe doing something um, with the phone stuff um, and another thing that is very good when maybe reaching the next city or also when the speed limits are changing it's always being displayed then on the GPS screen and I also when something changes from the speed limits I get it in the central small screen in the cockpit um, area so I'm always keeping informed about the speed limit and that also helps you to avoid speeding tickets the long-term comfort of the seats well they are really set on the sporty driving it's not really that suitable but just for long-term riding but as they are offering a lot of lumbar support options you can maybe adjust there a little bit and you can also as I've shown you in the interior static review you can also adjust how much support you get in the side area and also in the seating area so that also you can change the seating position around a little bit so that can actually um, make you more comfortable then yeah and um, then I think just from the normal riding before we get to the racetrack I can really just conclude it's astonishing how calm you can ride this car although it's an AMG model really the top sports model but with a comfort mode the suspension is really fine you can use it as a just as a normal A-class as a normal compact car but then as you soon as you switch to driving modes you can really make an emotional driving experience and, and just hammer the throttle have some fun go ride the corners enjoy the sound and um, that's very seldom that you can really have kind of two cars in one and um, also maybe another advantage to have the compact AMG model Now we're heading for a racetrack with a pretty stupid looking helmet but of course it's for the safety and we got a special aerodynamic pack here in this red color so you also see how the car looks in this racing red and the dynamic pack consists mostly in the front of a special side lip here from the lead to the side so the airflow is optimized already here and the huge rear wing really huge and I would never take that for a street car because I think it looks too exaggerated but however here on the racetrack it will give us a lot more pressure now on the rear finally we start with the racetrack we're in the sport handling mode so we got the race stuff activated and then the ESC is partially off and that's a good setting for the racetrack here if you hear the RPMs are going very high and by the way at the middle screen that's also very nice we got the engine informations like temperature and also the Newton meter and the horsepower figures also a very nice racing feature in the AMG version here so let's really test what this vehicle is capable of with a 381 horsepower facelifted version with even more horsepower 4.2 seconds from 0 to 100 kilometers very nice oh do you hear this sound from the exhaust this is really a very nice racing sound of course we have an all-way drive because you wouldn't get all the power to the ground otherwise predominantly if you just drive slowly on the street it's more like forward for the front wheel drive 
So it's like front plus rear. And here in the racing, of course, even more power is direct to the rear wheels. And um, usually up to a maximum of 50-50%. That's um, it's actually a good value then. Also the car with the 4 meters 29. It's quite short, compact car, and that makes it so agile here on the racetrack. And they have worked on suspension, made it more comfortable in the comfort mode, but also here in the race mode, stiffer. So you have a broader suspension setting, and that really helps us here on the race. We can, you feel the car feels so neutral. We are not really understeering that much, although we have predominantly the front wheel drive. push to the outside of the race track here that far. That's also pretty much fine. 160 we go now, 180 on the straight here in the loudest ring. About 200, it's really good speed. Now hammering the brakes, yes, very good performance. And it really helps that the car is so light. Light compact cars car. You don't need really this very big racing cars, which are also partially a little bit heavier than, depending on the car. It's not always just about the horsepower, it's also about the weight. And this really counts to this rather neutral handling we have here, and that is really so much fun. Also, the steering suits very well for the racetrack driving, you see it. Um, maybe it could be, well, it is direct enough, no question, but I would prefer if it would be a little bit more progressive. I know that uh, Volkswagen Corporation does that very well, that I don't need so long steering race, but in general you think I'm not steering too much here on the race track, that's quite fine. Now we're getting a little bit slippery on the reels, you may be also hearing that, pushing far, far out. Because when you hear driving a four-wheel drive car, you'd rather have this four-wheel drive drift then, it mean, means the rear doesn't break out, you don't understeer so much in the front but you go with all four tires to the outside. It's a really funny feeling right here. So, if you think about buying a sports car also for the racetrack, why not pick a compact one? You can also use in everyday driving, so you can combine actually both purposes with that one here. also for the better acceleration we have here. And yeah, how can you compare it to the Audi R3? We have also tested that one on the racetrack. And as both cars have similar length and also similar horsepower figures, they also feel kind of similar in the behavior on the racetrack. Mm, I'm not really sure which car is better in this case. That's a really hard question. But um, I think from the overall, I prefer the Mercedes a little bit because it's a little bit more emotional car to me. So enjoy some more race track here with me and the AMG version of the A-Class. Version to the non AMG version, the usual A class facelift, and we see well, basically, they look alike definitely. Just that the lower bumper 
is not that aggressive. We see just more of the outside color at the lower bumper. And the front grille is a little bit different while we have this really grill mesh structure here in the AMG version. We have this diamond grid at the normal version. These ones are the basic difference in the front. And of course, it doesn't sit that low and also the side profile is not that accentuated. In the rear, we probably see the biggest differences because we don't have this wing lip here. And of course, there's no huge diffuser. So the rear end here is just rather plain. But overall, the whole design structure you see, AMG and non-AMG version, kind of so similar. It's just these very sporty details that AMG has. We offered you at the first review here when we begin the video. I think this is probably the ugliest color you could pick for this A200D, the 2.2 liter diesel in the A-Class facelift. But what's your opinion on that color here, on that green? But what I find quite neat is that we got the contrasting green on the interior. So that's nice when you find the color from the exterior in the interior here, the sport seats. So these ones are not the super sport seats, these performance seats we've seen in AMG but the normal sports that have already the integrated headrest, but here with Artico fold leather on the outside and fabric on the inside. At the AMG, it would be microfiber dynamica on the inside then. Yeah, and the rest of the interior, you see, you already got here the nice styling elements, for example, with the air vents and also a lot of contrast stitches. So also, if you have not the AMG version, you can style your A-Class already pretty well. So the seating position actually it is really a relief when going from the performance seats in the AMG to these ones here. They offer you more space, just a little side support at the sides, but usually you don't need it so much on the road. Um, but as a sport seat, they already offer you enough actually, but it's really so much more comfortable in these seats. I can also very soon show you the very, very standard seats. They are in the model inside. I can soon show you and we can have all the three seats. What is important with the facelift is that all of the seats here, the sports and the standard seat, they come with this lengthenment from seat reduction in every version. So for tall people, you can make it even longer. And that makes, of course, an A-Class even more suitable for tall people. Everything else here, for example, quite interesting materials. This is kind of, I think, some maybe some very cloth at the top. Of it. Well, it's at least very interesting, and you know, you don't have to use just black plain plastic. It's just like the very surface, and I think a very clever idea from them to implement that. Very interesting, by the way, that with the AMG version, you have to put the key in, and um, but by the way, I can show you how the how the key looks. Um, this, you know, the standard. Mercedes keys, the AMG version has this AMG logo at the, the other side, the other one doesn't. And here you don't put the key in, it's just the start-stop knob for the, um, for the keyless function, that's one difference. Yeah, but everything else, it is indeed quite similar, it's more that you have this other seating position than in here, that, that one you feel directly. And what else is different in the equipment here? We have a panoramic roof, you maybe see that again, some sunshine on my face and I'm very excited how this will turn out when we sit in the rear. Here in the front actually no problem even um, what I for example realized that I had some other race cars for example an Audi TT when I had the helmet inside on the racetrack I really hit the helmet on the seat. Here in the A-Class it was very fine and even with the panoramic roof I think it's still okay and of course you can always adjust the seat as well. So what's happening here now in the rear different seats in the front well maybe they're a little bit more in the back now but I think the super sport seats they are a little bit slimmer so they offer you a little bit more knee space that's interesting and well with the panoramic groove indeed it does reduce the head space but they have found a quite of clever solution because the reduction in the head space is more in front of me you know like here and then to the back the ceiling rises again a little bit and that's a clever solution that you still can pick the permanent roof and don't have problem with headroom here in the rear. 
Very rarely we've seen that. Um, I think, well, the cost is that you can't carry on the panoramic roof till the end, but I think this is a very clever solution in here. Now let me give you a short driving impression of the 200D. Of course, when we start the engine, it's a diesel and we also have the diesel sound, no comparison to the AMG. But, I mean, you can also pick smaller petrol engines, for example, not the AMG version. Um, of course, you cannot compare the acceleration. Um, it's more about this everyday driving car here, for sure. Um, you also don't have this great flattened and steering wheel. I also don't have my microfiber stuff on the side of the steering wheel, but the steering wheel is still quite beautiful and you can very well handle it. It's not that direct from the steering, but I mean, just for a normal compact car, it's it's really fine. So you definitely feel comfortable when, when driving the car. And as I said, I found the seats way more comfortable than with the AMG version. And that's also something very important. Then the diesel, of course, when you hammer the throttle there, not so much is actually happening. And, but you know, I think for everyday driving, this one is really fine. Um, not sure if I would go with a smaller diesel because when you're then on the motorway, then you maybe lack some torque. Um, what is not that good for the overview, by the way, general for the A-Class is when you look behind you and like when you go left and side and right and side because that's hard to see them. That's not that good. And here with four meters, 29 in length, you also have a short turning circle. That's also very good, for example, in the city then. Let's have a diesel now here. Oh well, not too bad actually. Really, you'll be fine with the diesel, definitely, but I would only go for these if you really go like over 20,000 kilometers a year. Let's open the sunroof. Let's see how that feels when driving. And let's test how agile the car is. Well, I mean, for a non-AMG version, that's really perfectly fine. I have good control over the car, nice feeling in the steering wheel. So generally, I can recommend the diesel, but you can also go for the two-liter petrol engine, even if you're not in the AMG version. Yeah, well, you know, the panoramic roof is not too huge, actually, but as we've seen in the rear, it also has a function that being not too, too huge, that still the tall people can sit in the back. Yeah, so with the facelift, the general changes with the driving, well, okay, you see the different bigger screen, that is actually a difference. But then what else is to mention there, we don't have the adaptive suspension here, or, but still the suspension is very good, I can tell you, filters everything out. You just have to think about if you don't have this drive select like we have here now, you have to think about the combinations because this drive selector only makes sense when you pick the adaptive suspension because otherwise you just change the throttle input and that's kind of nonsense. So remember, if you go for the option drive select, then also take the adaptive suspension. That combination makes sense here. However, can you live without it? Yes, definitely. The AMG version, there it's really perfect because you then have the comfort and the hard setting both at the same time. Here in the normal A-Class version, just leave the suspension as it is. The standard suspension here right now is also pretty much fine. And now yet another version of the A-Class just for you because I know you always appreciate when we have the chance that we show you the different version, different engines and different trim levels as well. This one here is the A250 Sport. In this case, in the Motorsport edition, you see this Petronas green style, the contrast inspired by the Formula One racing team. So you got the additional wing in front of there and these green details. But in general, the 250 Sport Edition is something in the middle between the normal and the A Total AMG version. 
this case, 218 horsepower with this two liter turbo engine. So you already got a lot of power comparable to the Golf GTI, for example. So what about the pricing? Taking Germany as an example, the normal A-Class facelift started about 24,000 euros. This one here, the 250 Sport, is about 37,000 euros. And then the AMG 45 is 51,000 euros. So this one here is right in the middle in between, but you already got the AMG exterior and also kind of AMG interior. I'll soon show you. And uh, not the strongest engine here, but I think this power is already kind of sufficient. So this one here is actually a good price performance ratio. This is definitely my favorite front with the A-Class in this diamond structure grille, also with the shiny silver elements, especially when you look at them from distance, they really have their own kind of styling. I also prefer that one in comparison to the AMG front grille. What's your opinion on that? Give me the comments on that one. The A250 Sport also has a stronger bump in the lower part, not as strong as in the AMG. The AMG also had this rubber lip for the aerodynamics. And then here in the Motorsport Edition, you got this additional green contrast. The A250 Sport has a special logo at the sides, also bigger rims, 19 inch. The Motorsport Edition again then adds this green contrast to it. Is the Motorsport Edition my favorite one? Well, I think it's a little bit too much, but the usual A250 Sport version without the green contrast, that would be my choice then. The same accounts for the huge rear wing we've talked about before with the AMG aerodynamics package. This one comes here with a motorsport edition again with this green contrast. You can also order aerodynamics package but come on seriously it's pathetic I think. Just leave it and it's a beautiful car. So I would not go for the motorsports edition but for the A250 Sport as for the exterior. I hope you got the differences. Finally for the lower rear it's also broader at the lower part and got the special bumper in the lower part. Again, if you would not have the motorsport edition, no green there. And if you have the edition, then it's a green fake exhaust, by the way, here. But actually, from the distance, it looks quite fancy then, if you don't see the uh, real exhaust inside. Sport Edition already offers you this AMG style steering wheel. I would definitely go for it, it's really great. Well, if it would only have the Alcantara here on the side, it would be even better, or Dynamica in Mercedes case. Then what's special with the Motorsport Edition that we got the green contrast here on the round wheel. And I think this is actually quite a beautiful that the interior corresponds to the exterior features then. Same with the seats, we've also seen that um, uh, one with other um, equipment, for example, with the um, diesel, also you can pick this interior. But in this, case, this special green is reserved for the Motorsport Edition again, but I think it's a very good solution here again, the perfect one, Dynamica on the inside, microfiber, then Artico fall leather on the outside, very beautiful integrated headrest, and they are also very comfortable. And as I said earlier, you can also lengthen the seating area here for tall people. That makes a compact car also better accessible for someone with very long legs. So overall, again, a very refined interior and with a special sporty style, I really love that one here. Now we're on our way with the A250 Sport, I would say the AMG light model. 218 horsepower from the same 2 liter engine. It's not the same 2 liter engine, but kind of a downgraded version or not that kind of upgraded version. And actually this is also from driving a good choice because you have quite some power here. Right now I'm in the eco mode. We also have the drive selected, not the AMG drive select with a separated knob, but the usual drive select then we get in the higher models or optionally and we also have a lot of AMG features already for example we also have a sports suspension it means the car is a little bit lower it's also a little bit stiffer and 
that adds to driving fun with playing roads. Of course, you always lose a little bit of comfort, but it's still quite okay. So you get a lot of fun already with this car and also a quite direct steering, because this sporty direct steering is also, for example, included in the AMG and also here in the A250 Sport. With the Dynamic Select, I can also go to the Sport mode, then the RPMs go higher, you hear that, and we also get a special Sport exhaust, so a lot of elements, not as high, highly upgraded with the AMG, but something in between there. For example, it's almost like the difference C-Class, C63, the AMG, and the C450, which we'll also soon review, that will also be linked in the video description, so kind of the light AMG. So in the Sport mode now, and that means when I push the throttle right now, well, that is actually doing quite well already. And if you don't want to spend so much money on the AMG model, but also want the styling details and even some more driving fun already, we got the Sport seats here, not the performance, but the Sport seats, that already feels very well. And um, also from driving, does the AMG really offer you so much fun? Mm, I'm not that sure, because this one here is also very refined already, and you get a very good compromise then between the sporty ride and the comfy ride. So, actually, if you would ask me for the price performance, also from the driving perspective, this one here would actually be a quite a good choice then. And now my conclusion on the Mercedes A-Class facelift, the AMG version and the non-AMG version. Has there been actually so many changes that you couldn't pick the pre-facelift and now the after-facelift? Well, actually no, it doesn't make such a difference, but they have used some refinements, especially at the AMG version. They topped out the horsepower figure to be above Audi level again. And is it actually better than the RS3? Well, they are hardly so... It's not that huge a difference, really. Also on the racetrack, both kind of the compact car segment, both have done a really good job as for the performance. I think I like the AMG here a little bit more also, but that could also be just an emotional appeal because the interior is actually so greatly refined and also not as, well, sometimes the Audi interior is a little bit boring, you know. These ones here appear a little bit more to me. So everything we have seen was actually at the high quality build level, already when you pick the non-AMG version, but you have to watch out, and that's the one, this adventure of the a class it's the most expensive one in this segment. You have to check out with all the options you can pick that you don't exceed the price limits. But some options you really don't need utterly so you can easily go with the normal suspension because this one is already very good then and for example when you pick the AMG version just pick the standard seats and then for the best setup with the microfiber and the fold leather on the outside you can also pick the standard seats on the normal A-Class version or, or I also like the sport seats very much because they already look quite great and are not that uncomfortable than the super high performance seats we have presented you in the AMG version today so that's about it. I think the A-Class really sets a standard in this segment, but you know, not only for the quality, but all, also as for the price. So I also want to hear your comments again, of course, to the non-AMG version, to the AMG version, to the driving, interior, exterior, colors, whatever you think. And I hope I will also see you at the next Autogrid episode with Thomas.